My husband, Noah, is scuba certified. He took classes with his parents and his two younger brothers on a family vacation long before I ever met him. I am most definitely not scuba certified. <laughs> Yet, this discrepancy did not stop us from booking a scuba dive during a trip to Indonesia several years ago. We spent part of our time on the island of Flores in a town called Labuan Bajo, which is known as the gateway to Komodo National Park, home, of course, to Komodo dragons. It's also a hot spot for scuba diving. Divers can see coral reefs and sea turtles and most notably, manta rays. We booked a day trip that would take us out on the water and on two separate dives. This was no trouble at all for Noah. It was a little bit of trouble for me. <laughs> Luckily, the tour company offered a workaround. I could pay a little extra to essentially have someone on the trip whose entire job was to make sure that I didn't die. <laughs> An instructor who would quite literally hold my hand the entire time which is how I found myself on a boat, sailing out to sea. I was given the briefest of tutorials once we reached the first dive site. My instructor slash bodyguard taught me how to use the breathing apparatus, how to retrieve it should it somehow fall out of my mouth, and how to clear my mask of water. Once I demonstrated that I could do these three things, I was given the go-ahead to dive. Now, so far, this story makes me sound like I'm a courageous individual. I assure you that I am not. I am incredibly risk averse. This activity scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> but I really wanted to do it. A friend had told me that scuba diving was one of the most spiritual experiences of her entire life. She said that being in the water and seeing this completely different part of the world was nothing short of holy. So, for this dive trip, I decided that fear was not going to make my decision for me. I strapped on my tank, I jumped off the boat, I very tightly grabbed my instructor's hand, and down we went. I was terrified for the first five minutes. I couldn't stop thinking as we sank further and further below the surface about what would happen if my tank broke or if I somehow got separated from my instructor. But as I began to look around, this feeling of calm just washed over me. It was so quiet down there. And it was utterly magical. We explored reefs and I saw marine life up close that 
I'd only ever seen behind glass. I saw a sea turtle just drifting lazily on the current. And about halfway through that first dive, several manta rays passed overhead. It was indeed a spiritual experience. I may not have been like Peter, walking on the water, but I did have a holy moment in the water. A holy moment that involved both fear and awe. In today's gospel text, we meet the disciples on stormy waters. We're told that their boat is battered by the waves. They're far from land and the wind is against them. This is a serious storm, even a dangerous storm. But that's not what they're afraid of. Many of the disciples are fishermen. They've probably been out on boats in storms before. The disciples aren't scared of the storm. They're scared of what they see in the storm. For suddenly a mysterious figure appears on the water. The disciples see someone or something coming to them, walking on the waves. It sounds like something out of a horror film. It's a dark and stormy night. You're being tossed about in a tiny boat, and in a flash of lightning, you see a figure coming towards you. And the disciples are terrified, and they cry out in fear. They don't know who or what this is. They think it's a ghost. They certainly don't recognize this figure as Jesus. They don't recognize him because they've never seen Jesus like this before. They've seen him as wise teacher. They've seen him as prophetic preacher. They've seen him as compassionate healer. They've even seen him as a miracle worker, feeding the 5,000 with just a few loaves and pieces of fish. Oh, but they've never seen Jesus like this, demonstrating a supernatural power over the elements. This is something that truly only the divine can do. Water is an important symbol throughout Scripture. Jesus refers to himself as the living water. We're invited repeatedly into the waters of baptism. But water can also symbolize chaos and darkness, especially in the Hebrew scriptures. Think of the Genesis story, the creation narrative, the first verses of the Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. The Hebrew in that language, these waters are described as dark and chaotic, and the Holy Spirit is what comes over to shape them. Or think of the story of Noah and the ark. We're told of the chaos and destruction of the flood. These are waters that only God can control and from which only God can save. Or think of the Israelites escaping slavery and how the waters part for their safe passage. Again and again, we learn that only God has control over the waters. Only God can triumph over the dark 
and stormy chaos. We hear it echoed in today's text from Isaiah. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. Here in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is doing what only God can do. Demonstrating power over the waters, and it scares the daylights out of the disciples. So Jesus calls out, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Those words resound throughout the gospel. Jesus, God herself, and divine messengers are constantly reminding humans to not be afraid, especially when faced with the unknown or the unexpected. And Jesus also identifies himself for the disciples. He says, take heart, it is I. He intentionally uses those words, it is I. Our English translation doesn't quite capture the full resonance of that statement. Jesus says, I am. He uses the words that echo God's words from the burning bush to Moses. I am who I am. Jesus shows and tells the disciples about his divine power in this moment. Jesus is indeed one who can control the waters. He is part of the great I am. And of course, it is Peter who sees Jesus, sees his teacher as he's never seen him before, and wants to get closer. Of course, it is Peter who decides to take a risk. He says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter is always looking for a closer connection with Jesus. Sure, he often falls on his face in the process, but we can admire Peter's willingness to try. His desire for that spiritual experience. Peter does not allow fear to make his decision. He does not let fear keep him in the boat. He puts his legs over the side. He sets his feet on the waves. He takes a step, and then another, and then another. And then he gets distracted by the chaos that's around him. Maybe he realizes that he's doing something impossible and he begins to sink but Jesus doesn't let him drown no when Peter cries out Lord save me Jesus immediately reaches out a hand there is no hesitation and then imagine it Peter standing hand in hand with Jesus on the water It's a holy moment. What if Peter had stayed in the boat? What if Peter never took that step? Maybe not much would change about the story. Jesus would still have walked on water. Jesus would still proclaim himself to be the divine I am. The disciples would likely still see these signs and say, truly, you are the son of God. But things would have been different for Peter. 
If Peter had stayed in the boat, he would have missed his holy moment. You see, sometimes fear keeps us from the holy moment. Sometimes fear keeps us from encountering Jesus. There's much to be afraid of right now. Every day brings something new. And I know we each individually grapple with our fears. But Hyde Park Union Church, if you'll allow me to be bold this morning, I want to name that I think there's also some fear within our church body. I sense that we're scared of the change that's before us. We're scared of the decisions that face us. We need to make decisions about our building, decisions that will have ramifications for years to come. We need to continue to evolve into who God is calling us to be. And it's scary. It's scary to leave behind the familiar. It's scary to take a step out into what can seem like chaos. But here's the thing, Jesus isn't in the boat. He's not in our comfort zone. Jesus, the Son of God, the great I Am, requires us to take a step. We must be willing as a church to step toward the God that stands over the chaos. The God who isn't going to let us drown. The God that, yes, challenges us. The God who might appear in a way that we have never seen before. Mm -hmm. And we might feel like that's too big an ask. We might feel like we are people of little faith. But we know what a little faith can do. Jesus says to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And it can sound like he's getting on to Peter. He's chastising him, but I actually don't think he is. I think Jesus is reminding Peter, encouraging Peter, telling Peter what a little faith is. Can do. Because just a few chapters earlier in this same gospel, Jesus tells a story about a little faith. He says a little faith is like a mustard seed. The smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and it becomes a tree that all the birds can nest in. Hyde Park Union Church, a little faith can do a lot. So even if we feel like we've got a mustard seed in the face of the change that is before us, I'm here to tell you that that is more than enough. So let's get out of the boat. Amen.